Good evening, HCAL family and friends. My name is Martha Lance. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm one of the academic advisors in the Honors College. It is my extraordinary and humbling uh, pleasure to be with you this evening at our virtual event entitled Community, Community Connections, a conversation with current and past HCAL peer mentors. We are honored to have three alums present with us as well, James, Courtney, and Rosie. All three of these cats were peer mentors when they were students here at UVM. Joining our alums are three current HCAL peer mentors, Ben, Fosca, and Emily. My dear colleague, Scott Clark, once described the peer mentors of HCAL as the heart and soul of the Honors College. I believe this description is accurate. The HCAL peer mentors help students transition to college and find classrooms and plan community events that bind us together as a braided rug. Their student voice is golden and terribly discerning and wise. They truly live the student experience at UVM on multiple levels. Tonight, we turn to the peer mentors for their knowledge of the Honors College, their experiences in finding niches on campus, and their advice for exploring opportunities at UVM. We turn to the peer mentors, alums, for their insight into the impact that HCAL experiences had on their post-graduation life and goals. So now, I would like to invite all six of the panelists to introduce themselves. I also invite you viewing from wherever you are to post questions in the chat. So James, welcome, it's great to see you again. You too, Martha. Hi everyone, my name is James and I graduated from UVM with a major in biological sciences and minors in chemistry and statistics. I just recently came back from Taiwan where I was teaching English to elementary students on the Fulbright and now I am looking for a job specifically in diabetes research. It's nice to be with you all today. Thank you, James. Courtney, so lovely to see you. Thank you for coming back tonight. I wish we were in person having tea, but welcome and tell tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Martha. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Courtney. I use she, her pronouns, and I graduated the University of Vermont in 2020. I had a, what did I graduate with? A major in economics and French. It's been a while. Economics and French, and I had a minor in business. Um, after I went to UVM, I decided to get my master's at the University of Virginia in marketing and management. Um, I graduated in 2021, and I have since been working at a consulting firm called ZS Associates in Princeton, New Jersey. Great. Thank you, Courtney. Again, so wonderful to see you. And Rosie, welcome back to UVM and the Honors College. Lovely to see you. Tell us a little, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I was a, I, I'm Rosie, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I was a math and econ double major in the Honors College. Um, I did my thesis in mathematics. Um, I graduated in 2018 and immediately started working for a startup in Cambridge. Uh, it used to be called Hop Jump. We recently acquired um, a set of travel sites from TripAdvisor. Uh, we're now Smarter Travel. Um, and so I run the email program for them as a senior analyst. Um, and I live in Cambridge. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you so much. Uh, lovely to see you, Rosie. Thank you. Um, so now let's turn to our current peer mentors um, on the team. So I would love to introduce Fosca. Fosca, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Welcome. Hi, I'm Fosca, I use she pronouns. So I, funnily enough, I'm actually from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, um, so <laughs> I grew up mostly there, but um, my family is German and Italian. And so I also spent a lot of time in those countries and I've lived in a few other places. Um, I took a gap year before coming to UVM. Um, so if anyone has questions about that, or I'll talk about that probably a little later on how that's influenced my experience here. Um, I chose UVM and part of why I chose UVM was because of the Honors College. I came to UVM as an undeclared student, took a geography class and loved it. So I became a geography major with a 
a bio major as well. Um, I've recently decided to turn that into a minor. Um, so I have a lot of varying interests. Um, so yeah, and on campus, I'm involved in the Honors College through the Peer Mentor Program. I tutor subject area and study skills. I lead trips for the outing club. I ski with the Nordic Club and Chicks on Sticks. Then I'm currently involved in the Headwaters magazine on campus. Thanks, Fosca. You certainly you so you certainly do many things on campus and for the HCAL community. So Emily, how about uh, sharing a little bit of yourself with our virtual HCAL family? Yeah. Hi, my name is Emily. Um, I use she her pronouns. And I'm a junior zoology major here at UVM in the Honors College. And originally I'm from Warwick, Rhode Island. And here on campus, I'm also an RA here at University Heights North, as well as a member of the pep band. So oftentimes you can find me at the basketball and hockey games cheering on the teams. And yeah, I'm really grateful to be part of the UVM peer mentor team. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. It's it's wonderful to have you on our team, you and Fosca. And now Ben, Ben, least but not last but not least, Ben, tell us tell the audience, our virtual family, a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Ben. I use he him pronouns. I'm a senior in the Honors College this year. I uh, major in biochemistry and I have a minor in pharmacology. Right now I'm working on my thesis in the Majumdar lab at the Department of Surgery and uh, Outside of academics, I play a number of intramural sports and I am involved in this peer mentor team where I get to head the cookie baking. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Yes, uh, Ben's cookies are truly remarkable. Um, OK, so what I'd like to open up our conversation and I'm going to start with James and then perhaps go on to um, Emily, if that's OK. Um, the question I have for you is uh, how did you find your niche at UVM and in the HCAL? Um, I've been doing a lot of advising this week of folks thinking about changing their major and such like that. James? Yeah, so I came into UVM as uh, originally pre-med and that interest pretty much stuck with me for the whole time. Uh, HCAL, and specifically being in HCAL is really helpful. That's where I met the wonderful Martha who talked to me a lot about different experiences within UVM and specifically how HCAL can help with that. One of those was the pre-medical enhancement program, which I wouldn't have known about without meeting with Martha, who was the first year advisor at that time. Um, HCAL helps students go into or apply for what is called PEP, the pre-medical enhancement program, where basically they choose 10 pre-med students uh, throughout the whole university and they pair those students up for the rest of their three years starting from sophomore year with doctors and a medical student mentor from the UVM uh, Warner College of Medicine to basically just attend grand round lectures with shadow and I found that to be a really important kind of piece to my why in medicine and kind of like developing a better inside knowledge than what I originally have before coming into college. Another thing that HL kind of helped me with my niche is I was really surrounded by a lot of fellow science majors that were interested in pre-med as well and then I would kind of find them in the same classes that I was taking and mo the majority of my friends that I made from college that were my roommates, that were my study partners, were people I met in HCAL because with kind of that integrated community of living and learning. It's really easy just to meet someone in a study room and then just kind of click from there and work with each other. Uh, HCAL also helped me with my research. As a sophomore, I took a class called uh, Animal Products and Human Nutrition. So basically as a honors college student, you have to take your major like required classes and also honors college classes. And one of those classes was the Animal Products and Human Nutrition. And that's where I met my research uh, coordinator who I ended up actually doing a thesis with. Yes, thank you. So Emily, how did you find your niche, your niche here in, on campus? Yeah, I know that for me personally, college uh, my first year was a really big transition initially. Getting used to everything and living on campus was something that was totally new to me. 
And I think the first time that I really found my niche was when I joined the Hall Council here. So that wasn't directly through HCall, that was through residential life. But I was in the Hall Council here in New Heights North, and I was able to work with other students who live in the building, so other HCall students, and we got to put on events for the building and help build community there. And really from that, I actually got connected to you, Martha, and that's when I first learned really about the peer mentor team outside of my own peer mentor, Sophia, who was really helpful. But I got to collaborate with the peer mentor team then and help put on um, this big event, Hugo, which was super fun about like just building community during the winter, which was really great. And that was kind of my stepping stone into really like diving into the HCall community, I feel like, and has really um, just even deepened my interest in trying to create um, a community here in HCall the uh, different events and providing a space for people to connect and come together. And I think outside of that, one of the biggest things I've found about finding my niche is just reaching out and asking. I know I've gotten started with a bunch of different clubs that even if they haven't stuck with me, I've just tried by reaching out to my RA, friends from classes that I know, TAs, all different things, um, different experiences that I might not have tried if I wouldn't have asked. So I feel like that's probably my biggest piece of advice is just not to be afraid to ask because you never know what the results may give you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Emily. So um, Rosie, um, I would love to hear how you found your niche and then Courtney, we'll, we'll stick with the two alums and then we'll, we'll um, ben, ben and Fosca, you can chime in as well. So Rosie, tell us about your discoveries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably uh, easier for me to talk about like end result than it is to talk about the actual process because the actual process was a couple couple of years ago now but um i some of the activities that i did i was in an acapella group and obviously i was a peer mentor um i was a spin instructor and i was a tour guide and so my kind of mo was like side hustles um and just like doing lots of things that were fun, but that I would also get paid for. Um, and that that actually worked out really well and kind of gave me a lot of really good work experience to talk about when I was applying for jobs. Um, and it was kind of like extracurriculars, like, but a little bit with a punch. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I met my best friend in, in the Honors College, she's still, my best friend she lives down the street for me now. Um, my peer mentor program, like I, the network that I created or was part of for that. Um, my my grand mentee is now I, I'm now his manager at my company. We hired him a couple months ago, um, and so I, I think for me it was all about just finding the people that I really liked and then figuring out how to do the activities that I needed to do in order to be surrounded by those people. Um, and sometimes that was honors college related and sometimes it wasn't. Um, but I found that the honors college was a good touchstone to come back to of like, I know that where I'm living, I'm surrounded by people who, who care about school and who care about grades and who want to really be taking all this seriously. Um, and then I could kind of scurry around and like do whatever, but know that I would come back and be a responsible student. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Rosie. Yeah, you were a um, quite the spinning instructor, if I recall. You had quite a reputation on campus for brutality. But anyway, you're great. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Courtney, tell us tell us a little bit about your your thoughts on all this. Sorry, couldn't find the unmute button. Um, so I first thought of the, the first thing that kind of happened to me at, at UVM was I switched my major in two weeks. And I think Martha loves this story because I literally came in the day before um, ad drop period where you can't like change any anything. And, and I switched my entire major. I was engineering and then I switched into economics and completely rearranged my schedule. And I think really having the support of having Martha right downstairs and everyone kind of right downstairs and being able to talk to and have these conversations with a lot of people in the place that I lived was really, really convenient. And I don't think I would have been able to switch and kind of really know that I wanted to switch as early had I not been in the age call community. And I think it's kind of funny, Rosie, you probably don't remember this, but I had a conversation with you about economics because I was going to switch to it. And like you actually helped me change into it. We had a conversation at Henderson's long time ago, um, but I was just like, this girl is so smart. I can't do economics. I can't do this, but I did it. So, um, IRT or something? 
Uh, no, Martha actually connected me to you. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I remember. But it all comes back to Martha. Um, well, I'm so glad it worked out. <laughs> that's my one story. And my other one, we're also very similar, Rosie. Um, my best friend also was in each call. Her name was Haley. And I saw her last weekend. We drove up to Boston and stayed at her apartment. So those connections really do stay with you after college. So. And she was my next door neighbor. She didn't have anyone. That's why we hung out. That's the only reason we, no other connection was she was literally just right next door. So when you go to college, keep your doors open and say hi to everyone because you never know who could be your best friend. Thank you, Courtney. Um, I was actually I had not remembered our story of that 5 p.m. last that day of a ad drop and I was not going to bring it up tonight, but thank you for sharing that. There are a lot of folks who are concerned about their major. Are they in the right place, etc. So so um so Fosca and Ben, I'd love to turn to you for your current perspectives on this. And thanks. <laughs> thanks for the alum stories. Thank you. Fosca. So yeah, as I mentioned, I came to UBM undeclared. Um, and I had a lot of different interests. I still do. Um, but I think within the Honors College, I also have met a lot of my good friends through this community. Um, I have gotten to build relationships with advisors like Martha and Scott. And I think those immediate connections and relationships have really helped me to figure out my academic and non-academic path at UVM. Um, and so also sophomore year after I had um, declared my two majors, sophomore year I had to take a lot more classes for my biology major. And I was also taking geography classes for my geography major. and I didn't have a lot of space in my schedule for other classes, but my honors college classes were ones that were interdisciplinary and allowed me to explore other interests or build, make connections between different classes of mine. So for me, the honors college classes, um, they were also small uh, seminars and I got to know my professors really well and I still keep in touch with a lot of them and they've helped me understand um, kind of my interests and the ways that they blend together, which has been really useful. I even just had a conversation with Scott today because I saw him on campus. And so it's really nice to see like familiar faces around campus from this smaller community. Um, and so, yeah, my academic path has really uh, been shaped a lot by my honors college experiences. And I also had a lot of my friends through this community. So I Okay, great. Thank you, Fosco. So Ben, so Ben, um, how about, uh, I, I know you've done some amazing things on campus with research and your own evolution, and um, we've gotten to know each other fairly well. So I'd love for you to, to share your thoughts as well. Yeah, um, when I came to UVM, I was also pre-med. So when I started, my first goal was to get involved in anything medical that I could find. So I started volunteering at the UVM Medical Center. Um, I still volunteer there. I work in the, um, the inpatient pediatric unit where I get to hang out with the patients and the siblings and make sure they feel comfortable. And it's a really fulfilling uh, opportunity and experience. Um, once I, after I got into that uh, freshman year, I joined the peer mentor team as a sophomore, um, which has been an amazing experience overall, being able to help connect people with the resources or be the resource that they need. Um, and then my sophomore year in the fall, I took an honors college class um, on viruses. Funnily enough, it was about how they're a great thing and not necessarily always bad. Um, and that kind of sparked my interests in uh, what I do for research. I was originally lined up to do research in, on HIV, um, but due to COVID, we had the lab had some funding issues and so I couldn't join, um, but that brought me, that ended up connecting me to my current lab where I am actually studying the uh, immune system response to uh, COVID-19. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ben. Thank you all. Um, definitely a, a, a lot of talent here and a lot of wisdom. So we have some questions from uh, the, the folks beaming in tonight. So here's the first one. And I guess if you could raise your hand if you're willing to answer it. Um, the question is, uh, my student is interested in getting out and working in the community. 
how do honors college students um, how do our honors college students find volunteer opportunities? Can, I, can anyone answer that? OK, Fosca. I think it depends on what avenue you would like to find those opportunities, but I know there are a lot of clubs on campus that have volunteer opportunities. So there are specific clubs just dedicated to volunteer work, for instance. Um, there also may be opportunities through other organizations that aren't clubs, um, but I'd say that would be the first place I would look. So did you ever feel homesick during your first year at, at UVM? Uh, OK, Courtney. Um, so sorry, uh, I was just like reminded. So I went to I was from Pennsylvania, so I was six hours away, so not super, super far away, but far enough that um, I couldn't go home every weekend. I remember literally crying like the second my mom left so bad that she had to come back up like the next weekend. So that was pretty sad. Um, but what my parents did to kind of remedy that they would FaceTime me and made sure they were constantly checking in on me. And after a while, I kind of like got better. Um, I think the main thing is like continue talking to your student, even if they like seem frustrated or overwhelmed or they don't want to talk to you. Like, trust me, they do want to talk to you. And I looked forward to that like Friday night call with my mom, even until senior year, because it really like some nights I was just like, wow, I really needed to step away from my work just to talk to my mom or my dad for like 10, 15 minutes. And I also went out and did stuff like my roommates and my friends forced me to go out on the weekends, even if I didn't want to go to the farmer's market or apple picking or just down to Lake Champlain to get a ice cream cone, like just go and do stuff. Tell your, your kids and tell yourself to go and force yourself out, put yourself in a little bit of an uncomfortable situation, because if you're just sitting at your bed, then you're going to be thinking over and over again about your home. So that's kind of like my advice on that. OK, anyone else have some good advice? Yeah. All right, so here's another. Oh, Ben, you have you have some advice? All right. Yeah, I just second the um, the phone calls home have always been great to find a, a, a good time to call home. It for me, it's always been on my walk home from my lab. I'll call my parents and talk about my day, talk about their day. Um, but definitely finding a routine where you're able to call home and uh, just connect back with your roots has really solved a lot of the homesickness. Okay, great. All right, so this is a really important question and one um, I think your perspective can be really, really helpful. Uh, my student is feeling overwhelmed with the amount of work she has due. What are some strategies that she can use to feel more settled in college? OK, Fosca. Um, I can try to answer that um, from a tutoring study skills perspective and if anyone else wants to jump in on um, some other perspective. But one resource that I would really suggest is um, study skills tutoring at UVM. So those tutors are trained to help students with study skills and time management. And so that is definitely a good resource because as study skills tutors, we have an array of resources that we can cater specifically towards a student and their needs. So that would be my first suggestion. Um, and then also, a lot of students are feeling overwhelmed, so they're definitely not alone in what they're feeling. But um, definitely, study skills tutors. If there's if there's like a time management um, aspect to that. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so here's one for the alums. Did any of you do an internship while you were at UVM? Rosie and Courtney both. Okay, how about Rosie, Courtney? Yeah. Um. I wait. Am I unmuted? My good. It's not showing up. This oh my god, not a not a teams gal right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't find the box. Um, I did two internships uh, between my sophomore and junior year. I interned at a place called Commonwealth Financial Network in Waltham, Massachusetts. It's a uh, broker dealer, um, and did investment research there. And then my summer between my junior and senior year. I stayed in Burlington and did an actuarial internship at National Life um, in Montpelier. Highly recommend doing a summer in um, Burlington if you can. It was 
absolutely amazing. Um, both of those kind of served to rule out things for me. Um, I did the finance one. I was like, that was a great experience. Great thing for the resume. Don't want to do finance. Did the actuarial one was like, that was a great experience. Great for the resume. Not going to do insurance. Um, and I think those like I think crossing things off the list with internships is the most valuable thing you could get out of one because very rarely are you going to have an internship that you're like this is my dream job and and if you are feeling that it's like do you actually really like it or are you just so excited to be getting paid to do something um <laughs> that like anything would be amazing like the fact that you get to go home at five like is that what you love um because like do you want to do it for <laughs> full time for a year or more um and then i also i i forgot to say earlier but this this wasn't an internship but it was there was some kind of experiences in it was i i studied abroad and did a food studies program um in italy my junior fall um and so we had like some community service and like training work with that but that was pretty much just for fun awesome yeah courtney how much how about your advice so my first internship, I think it was between my sophomore and junior year. I don't really remember, um, but it was in my hometown and it was a marketing and accounting kind of internship at a nonprofit. And I got that job kind of it wasn't through UVM, but um, it doesn't that doesn't really matter because the second one that I got for I think it was junior to senior year. I spent the year in Burlington um, summer or the summer in Burlington also highly recommend it. It's beautiful in the summer um, and I was working as a research assistant at the medical center. Don't know if that counts as an internship, but I got the job off of the UVM like work page um, and it was really cool and that helped me actually realize I really do like working in sciences and health sciences, just don't want to be a doctor. So that's kind of why at my current role, um, CS mainly works with pharmaceutical and medical device companies. So I get to work with marketing and kind of all that stuff, but with a health science background, so. Nice, great, awesome, thank you. Uh, just um, just an interlude here, a friendly, a friendly request to you, Ben, to try some vegan recipes. Okay, so whoever wrote that, do you have any recipes? Please send them to Ben, Will, <laughs> at uvm.edu. <laughs> okay, what do you say, Ben? Do you have any vegan recipes yet? Want I we might have some. I'm sure we can find some. It'll yeah. it'll happen. It'll happen. Okay. Awesome. All right. OK, so there's a this is an important question as well. Um, is it the peer mentors job or an RA job to help out students who are struggling with making friends? This uh, OK, yeah, so Emily. Yeah, I um, I think I can speak to that as a peer mentor and an RA for this building. Um, I would say it's a combination of both. Um, coming in as a first year, you're going to have a lot of resources available to you, whether it be academics, social, um, all kinds. And so I think like the saying, like it takes a village is really um, prominent. So don't be afraid to have your student reach out to both your RA and their peer mentor because they can both help you in different ways. Um, your RA might have some more strengths about getting you connected to other people who live on your floor together, but your peer mentor might also have some really great resources about getting you connected to different clubs or um, other students in the Honors College. So I think that both really have their strengths and weaknesses, and both um, an RA and a peer mentor are here for you and your student as they transition into that first year here at UVM. Yeah, and, and thank you for that question. Uh, it's all about connecting and connections, obviously. And uh, so the advisors as well are here to help uh, your students get connected with our other folks um, in HCAL, but even beyond. So uh, it is it is hard initially to make friend groups, but you all tell me the process does work. Bosca, do you want to talk a little bit about making friend groups? Yeah, sure. Um, so if I don't know um, if your student is the first year, but you know, for me at least, I immediately had a suite of Sphere 6 um, in U Heights North, and so I hung out with them mostly freshman year. But as time went on, I you know, joined more clubs, um, maybe met some people, maybe didn't. Um, but I think generally for me, like I realized you know, they were a nice group of people 
but we didn't have that much in common ultimately. And so I started to find other um, people that I connected with and I'm still making new friends as a junior. So I think it's an ongoing process and it's definitely difficult at times. Um, but knowing that, you know, the people you're meeting now, they might, you know, you, they might become your best friend, but they might also just be someone you can do something with or get along with um, that aren't like your best friend. Yeah, Rosie, do you have some comments? Yeah, yeah, I have I have um, two thoughts. Um, one is uh, I try to emphasize to anyone who's about to go into college, like you are about to change so much and then everyone around you is also about to change so much. And you might have a person your freshman year that you're like, oh my gosh, we're going to be bridesmaids at each other's weddings. We're going to be friends forever. And sophomore year, that might, you know, you might not be as close anymore and it doesn't invalidate the importance of that relationship at the time you maybe just have grown in different directions um the other thing that i the best advice that i received was um kind of along the lines of what fosco was saying which is um allow people to serve different purposes in your life i think we have a lot of emphasis on like you have to find your best friend and that person is going to get you through everything everyone that you meet in college you have known for less than four years they are not going to be your everything like it takes till after college for your best friend in college to like really like see it through um and for you to know like okay this person is going to actually stick it out with me like we're going to be in our lives each other's lives forever and even then you don't know um and so allowing you know this person to be the person you go to lunch with on tuesdays and this person to be the person that you study for this class with and this person to be the person that you you know go to that dining hall with on Wednesday nights. Um, allow that to happen and allow yourself to like put eggs in different baskets. Um, and I think a lot of people will avoid a lot of heartbreak that way. Um, Cause if you have all those eggs in that basket with that one person, then when that dissolves, you're like, oh no, I have no one. And that's not a good feeling. <laughs> all right, thank you, Rosie. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so we're all evolving. That's for certain. We're all evolving. So we have another question, um, particularly um, regarding sophomores who are in the process of beginning to think about thesis topics, where they're heading. Do you have any advice about choosing a topic? And James, I'm going to throw this to you uh, about your discovery of a thesis uh, process in place. All right. Sorry. I was also having the unmuting issues too, Rosie. Also not it's a team not player, it's apparently. It's show me where it is. <laughs> so I think the process for uh, finding research your sophomore year is uh, different for everybody. There's a ton of avenues to go about doing it, which is what I think is the best part about finding research, but also can be the most difficult. So for me, what I kind of ended up doing was I met my professor in one of my H call classes, and then she kind of described her research, which was related to diabetes and that was just something that I was originally looking looking to so it was kind of just a lucky chance encounter for me but it kind of goes to show that I think the best way to find research is to always be kind of like listening and open to everyone's experiences that they talk about another good way to find research is really connecting with your school like your college advisor and also your honors college advisor as well. They have a whole network of fellow professors and they'll be able to tap into that as well if you tell them your interest or anything that you're just thinking about and they'll be able to lead you in the right direction. And I also believe it's been a while now, but isn't there a UVM directory that kind of has a list of all of the professors and what they're doing research on? I don't have that link on me, but I'm sure Martha or one of the current students would be able to, I guess, like provide that. Yeah, thank you, James. Yeah, there is a directory. Yeah, Rosie, Rosie, you have uh, a comment? I was just gonna say, um, highly recommend putting an emphasis um, on the person that you're doing the thesis with, the, the professor you're doing the thesis with, as opposed to the subject matter itself. Um, everyone I know that had a really smooth thesis process um, had a great advisor who like, they were doing work that slotted in with what that advisor was doing anyway people that went to different people and they're like, I really want to do this, I think, help me. 
those tended to sometimes not go as well. So like if you really know what you want to do, like sure, go for it. But if you're like, I don't really know, pick the advisor, not the topic and just let it fall into place. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Ben, you're in the Ben. Thank you, Ben. You're in the throes of this, Ben. You're in the throes of this. So and you've had quite a process and have just applied for a Fulbright as well. So I'd love to hear your perspective. Yeah, um, I'm in the middle of working on my thesis and I can definitely say that it was a bit of a roller coaster finding a lab and settling on a topic. But um, so I can speak to the STEM side of things. Um, when you're doing basic science research or most science research, um, you mostly want to look for a lab that aligns somewhat with your interests. For me, I was interested in virology. Now I'm doing RNA biology, um, but it, it all kind of aligned with the particular parts of um, biochemistry that I'm really interested in. Um, and then once I got to the lab, I started doing work. My principal investigator uh, provided me with a project to start working on. And that slowly became what I worked on the majority of the time. And it is now the, the project I'm working on for my thesis. Um, especially in the sciences, you'll find that a lot of uh, researchers who have labs here have projects on the back burner that they want to do, but they don't have enough people for. And so if you go to someone and say, I really like the general focus of your lab, they can probably find you a project to do for your thesis. So you don't you aren't necessarily required to come up with the idea yourself. Yeah, Fosca. Fosca. Yes. I was just going to add, um, I'm also I'm in I'm a junior who's in the process of writing a thesis proposal and kind of trying to figure out my, what my thesis is and um, I am doing my thesis through geography department, which is social science. So for social science, sometimes like STEM, you'll find a project that a professor has that you can work on, but other times you will craft your own project. Um, so there's definitely different ways um, and different avenues of, of coming to a thesis topic. And it's, it's definitely challenging, but I think for me, at least, it's a really great challenge um, and it's allowing me to put together a lot of my interests, whether they're academic or not academic, um, and kind of trying to culminate kind of my academic experience, my experience at UVM into something um, that I am interested in. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for your comments. Um, the Office of Fe the four office fellowships, undergrad research and opp opportunities in undergrad research is also part of our advising team in the Honors College. And so fellowships um, and conferences, there's a student research conference in April, for example, there was a fire fire opportunity today fall into research. So come talk to the H call advisors as well. Uh, and I think you'll find that the thesis process is really um, baby steps all along the way. As a sophomore right now, you have some general areas where you're curious about, and this will then come down into a nice package of a thesis overall uh, later on. Uh, but we're here to guide you and the faculty are here to guide you. And thanks for the great advice about finding a mentor who responds to you and just kind of honing your interests. Great. A couple of other questions. Fosca, this one's for you. Um, how do you find a study skills time management tutor? I think I found one, Fosca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just put the link right in there uh, for the tutoring center and scheduling an appointment, but basically either you schedule it through the Navigate app specifically, um, which is an app most students will probably have on their phones to schedule appointments with professors too, or else you can contact the tutoring center directly and they have a list of tutors as well for different subjects or study skills. So they can um, then contact us directly through email. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. So another question I suppose for me um, is, uh, there's a question about a sophomore admit not living in the building. 
we're aware of how it takes a little ex extra effort potentially to be feel part of the community. Any of the peer mentor uh, programming, you're, you're more than welcome to attend. And also, you, you're, we'd love to get to know you as advisors. I will periodically send out emails to you, invite you to things. Uh, but yes, please come see us. And the peer mentor team uh, is up on our website. You're definitely the peer mentors are available to everyone, as as is our programming. So uh, thank you for that. We appreciate that. Sometimes it's a little tough coming in as a sophomore admit, um, but just be aware that in your HCOS seminar, it may appear that everyone knows each other, but they don't because everyone is getting to know each other as sophomores as well. Anyone have? Uh, anyone else uh, want to take up that one um, of how we might welcome uh, sophomore admits? OK. Um, OK, so all right, so aha. Uh -huh. um, an interesting question here for you all. Uh, where's the best study spot in Burlington? Who wants to do that one? Are, are all these like secrets? Ben, do you, are you willing to divulge your secret? Um, I'm not necessarily going to share mine because it's uh, hard to find and I'd like to keep it that way. But <laughs> um, exploring campus is a great way to find the spot that's good for you. Go into buildings, look in all the hallways. There are generally chairs and desks and at the ends of hallways, maybe you want to go to innovation and use one of the desks at the end of the hall. Um, you know, find an environment that works well for you. Um, and the best way to do that is really, really to look inside all of the buildings on campus. Anyone um, anyone else have tips about finding places to study? Yeah, Rosie. Do you have I, I just love fireplaces, so my favorites always were um, Henderson's, uh, the fourth floor of the Davis Center and the the lobby of Hotel Vermont. I don't know if they still let people just like hang out there, but there's like Juniper Cafe you can like get a coffee and, and like hang and feel fancy. It smells good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, there are some other uh, hideaway areas. Uh, the Arboretum in um, in the in R Rubenstein. Uh, my secret place when I really am feeling I need to totally get focused is the Dana Medical Library. I don't know. I think they're still letting students in there. Um, but creating a study environment. Any tips on on that? What what are some rituals you all do to create? to get you in the in the mood to study. Anybody want to share any rituals? Yeah, Courtney. So I still do this at work too, so it's kind of like focusing rituals. I feel like I have to have music or ASMR. It's like when people do weird noises in your ear. Love that stuff. Um, and then I like to have a snack because I don't want to keep getting up. So that's really important. Maybe a couple of snacks and obviously a big jug of water and some coffee or tea um, and kind of just like a dimly lit place. So just have like some space around me so that people aren't distracting me because I really like to talk a lot. So if someone walks by me, I'm going to try to talk to them. Um, those are really good things to for studying and just focusing on what you need to get done. Um, and even if you're, you know, not just necessarily studying, like sometimes you just need to take a mental break. So if you're bullet journaling or if you want to draw or whatever your creative outlet is, it's really good to kind of have like a similar focused vibe. So those are my things that I still need. OK, thank you. Ben, did you have some uh, some wisdom to share? Ben. Yeah, um, my my study choices have changed a little bit as I. have oh, OK, so now I'm I'd like to be alone and you know really center in on how I'm studying. But freshman year, I really I um, thrived off of the energy of other people being focused. And so a lot of times I would ask the people who lived in my hall who are also studying for the same exams or similar exams on a certain weekend like let's go to the library we got a study room um and we uh 
would work in the study room together and we would get lunch together where we would talk about what we were studying and then we would go back to the study room and study more afterwards. And so that um, that environment of like always being around people who were thinking about academics and doing academics really helped to facilitate my own interest and focus on my own academics. Great. And of course, um, of course, there are the study rooms in UHN. OK, um, any of you thinking of going to grad school? <laughs> OK, Ben? Um, I'm pre-med, uh, not quite uh, the same as a PhD program, if that's what you're, you're talking about. But um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to, I want to go to medical school. Um, but my plan right now is to take a gap year or two. I've uh, actually just submitted my application to the Fulbright Scholarship Program, which if I get it, will send me to Germany for a year to study uh, HIV pathogenesis at the University of Heidelberg. Um, but uh, graduate school is definitely a, a, a great path to take um, and if you have more specific questions about uh, what that looks like in terms of uh, taking the GRE or the MCAT or gap years and applications, um, definitely email any of us and we would be happy to help. Thank you, Ben. Um, James, here's one for you. It's, uh, it's, the question is, did any of you have your study abroad impacted by COVID? But we're going to throw in Fulbright to Taiwan. So would you, I know that would tell us a little bit about COVID and you're getting your Fulbright fix. Uh, so yeah, COVID I think impacted my Fulbright three times. Uh, so it was originally supposed to start in August and go of August of 2021. No, August of 2020 and go to August 2021. Uh, then that got cut in half to where I started in January of 2021 instead, which luckily I was able to go do. Um, with my specific pro program of Taiwan, they were handling the COVID virus really well, and we were able to kind of do that half of a Fulbright as compared to a lot of other countries where a lot of people actually just didn't get to do the Fulbright and all and had to either defer to the next year. And then in May, uh, unfortunately, COVID outbroke in Taiwan and everything kind of went online, especially in my teaching. So I don't know if any of you have like taught like a 12 year olds on like Zoom meetings that don't share the same language as you, but it was certainly very difficult, but a learning experience in itself. A lot of funny little like one word English like responses they'd type and I just like try my best with like funny pictures and stuff like that. But yeah, COVID uh, definitely put a lot of dents in my plans. I think the best thing you can kind of do with that is you can't really control it. So try to adapt to it. Once, once I figured out when I was leaving, I got a part-time job at the UVM Medical Center as a COVID screener. And then when COVID kind of impacted my Fulbright again in Taiwan, I just kind of focused on trying to be outside and exploring the rich like history around where I was, which was specifically Jinmen, which is like a half mile away from uh, the like China border, the shaman specifically, and then just really focusing on trying to do all my duties still. Awesome. Yeah, Fosca. The lights just went off. Automatic Fosca. Yeah, so I am actually currently in the process of trying to study abroad for this spring. So my original plan, I came to UVM from a gap year and travel and living in other countries, um, meeting other people has always been very important in my life. And so I knew when I came into UVM that I wanted to study abroad. So I kind of built my four-year plan, although it's changed so many times um, around that. And so I had originally thought, you know, Honors College kind of built it into the curriculum where junior year it is, you know, is when you can more easily study abroad, usually in the fall. So I had planned to study abroad this fall. Last winter I was 
in the process of figuring out what study abroad program I wanted to do. Then I decided probably wouldn't be able to study abroad this fall. Um, I was correct in that UVM did not uh, officially approve study abroad for students. Um, so instead, I have applied to a program in Sevilla, Spain for this spring and tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be finding out whether UVM um, allows students to study abroad and what their requirements for that are, but definitely have learned to be flexible and try to come up with many different alternatives. And I think a lot of people have learned that through COVID, um, you, the unexpected happens and you have to plan for multiple scenarios. So um, if I am not able to study abroad in the spring through UVM, I might pursue a leave of absence um, or other, there are other options too. So it's definitely hopefully possible for students who are wanting to study abroad. But I'm happy to talk to whoever asked that question more at some point about that process. Thank you, Fosca. Yeah, I mean, there are also uh, some some really good um, short term study programs There are also UVM has short term study programs uh, that I think hopefully will be in operation too. So we strongly encourage people to think about study abroad. It takes a little bit of planning. And I'm talking to a lot of first years about this, certainly sophomores, but um, if it can be built in, I agree. I think it's wonderful to get abroad. All right, so we have one more question. Um, uh, basically, have um, any of you suggestions for cheap restaurants in town for their students to go to? Affordable, but good. Is there such a thing in Burlington? <laughs> Who wants to enter that one? Yeah. Emily, do you have any suggestions? Um, yeah, I guess it depends on what everybody's looking for, but I know personally off the top of my head for um, Asian food that I can think of, um, Bangkok in the alley is really good. It's a Thai restaurant downtown that's really nice. And I also know that Al's um, French fries is really popular. It's right down the road, I think, um, almost in South Burlington, as well as um, the creamy stands downtown are always really nice. But there are definitely a bunch of restaurants in Burlington that are both good and affordable. You just kind of have to seek them out. Good. Is the Maze food truck still there? Maze yeah. didn't some. Uh, you is know, she still I, there? the food trucks got a little bit hit with COVID. I haven't been oh, out okay. there. Emily, anybody, Ben, are the food trucks, Fosca, are the food trucks still there? There are at least two on, yeah, there are at least two, I believe, on, um, by the Waterman Green there, um, where the older buildings are on campus, there are at least two food trucks there currently, but I'm not sure which ones. <laughs> yeah, she may still some get dumplings. I, I miss oh. her dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, hopefully we can find cheap dumplings in Burlington. Um, anyway, thank you. So yeah, we're looking for cheap dumplings. I, I know what you mean, Rosie. I'm I'm not sure about that, but I will go search tomorrow and see, and I'll get back to you. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. So um, so we're coming to the end of our evening, and I'm going to put everyone on the spot to very quickly give the parents a word of advice. Uh, as we go around and possibly their students quickly what what do, what what advice would you give parents and, and and their students so I'm gonna go around the room and thank you all for coming thank you alums for being here it's pure joy to have you back remember you're a continuum of our H call family and we will definitely hope to reconnect with you and the peer mentors are available to everyone so in rapid fire Ben, piece of advice to parents. I guess we'll just we'll just stick with the parents. Re piece of advice, Ben. Uh, college is definitely an evolution. Um, so when you're helping your student through uh, through college, it, um, keep keep that in mind. They're going to change. Uh, your relationship with your student is going to change, and so um, being open to that change is really important. OK, thanks, Ben. We've got four minutes, so rapid fire. James. Uh, I think it's the small things like just getting sending a text to your student in the morning like, hey, good luck on this test that you told me about or just like making sure that you're keeping up with the updates that 
your student is talking to you about so they know that they're feeling heard. And again, you have been with these people for all of their lives, so you are their biggest supporter. Great. Thank you. Rosie, uh, Rosie, how about a piece of advice for parents? Rosie. Um, I would say uh, give your students space, but also prioritize mental health above all else. Um, and I also would like to emphasize only encourage grad school if your student actually really wants to go to grad school. Um, I had a lot of friends whose parents were pressuring them to go to grad school and they didn't want to. And I was like, why would you get more debt if you don't want to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rosie. Courtney, Courtney, how about a piece of advice for the parents? I think for the parents, make sure to take care of yourself too, because that's really important. Um, for a lot of you, this might be, you know, this you might be empty nesters, and it might be your only child or your first kid going off to college. It's a really, really big milestone, um, but make sure that you're taking the time for yourself too. Great, good advice always. Okay, Emily, Emily, a piece of advice for the parents. Yeah, I think knowing that your student isn't ignoring you on purpose. I know there are some weeks where I'm super busy with everything that I find hard time to take care of myself, let alone, you know, call home. So it might just be quick texts in between classes, but know that they are thinking of you and they're not trying to keep you out of their lives. There are just some times when it's a lot all at once. Thank you, Emily Fosco. Last word for the parents. Emily, um, kind of spoke about what I was going to say as well, but I think at least in my experience and I get really busy, it's hard for me to keep in touch with people at home. So just understanding that, you know, if your student isn't reaching out to you, it may not necessarily be because they don't want to talk to you. They might just be really busy, but also like, try to check in with them um, so that they know you're there for them if um, you want to be. OK. Thank you. Thank you all, all peer mentors, past and present. It's delightful to see you. Uh, the peer mentors, I think Fosco, you put the peer mentor link to our website. You'll see a variety of our, our teams, about 17 uh, students of various disciplines. We do try and place uh, first years in groups according to major. It's tough. There are hundreds of majors at UVM. I do my best, but the peer mentor team is all available to your students. And I encourage you uh, to encourage your students to go to our events. Sophomore admits as well, signs up in the building. The H call events calendar is a good place to know what's going on as well. And if you have any suggestions for us, feel free to um, also contact H call advising. Um, I totally feel that the peer mentors are colleagues in advising. And as you've heard, they had a lot of wisdom to share. And alums, it's great to see you. And um, I look forward to hearing more about how your lives are unfolding. And I think the theme tonight was frankly evolution, right? We're all evolving. Even the old advisors are evolving. And I think it's important to be patient with ourselves, with our students and with the process of evolution. So we wish everyone a good night. We wish everyone good health and happiness. And we wish all the students in HCAL currently great adventures. We live vicariously through your students and we certainly want them to succeed and be happy. So. Um, students, we want to get to know you. Come see us. Any, anything else, group? Thank you very much. Thank you for this evening. I guess that's it, the end of our, our presentation. Good night.